Hello and welcome, my name is Andrew Peel, and in this video, I wanna explain how I'm using geometry nodes in Home Builder. First, I'm gonna explain how I'm using them to display dimensions and other technical information in the scene. I'm gonna give you a walkthrough of how they're used, and then give you a brief walkthrough on the node structure for those objects. Next, I'm gonna explain how they're used for creating geometry for the cabinet parts. And this not only includes the carcass parts that are used for manufacturing, but also how it's possible to create different door styles by simply adjusting a few parameters. And finally, I'll explain how I'm using geometry nodes to change the size of complex geometry. And my goal of creating this video will be to explain my knowledge of how geometry nodes work for people who want to learn, but also hopefully find other Blender users who might want to collaborate on this project. Geometry nodes is such a powerful feature, and I know that I'm just scratching the surface on what's possible. So as I go through this, I'm going to point at some things I hope to improve in a future release. And if there are others who might be able to help out or at least point me in the right direction, please feel free to reach out on Discord or through my website's contact page. Links are in the description. So I'm displaying dimensions in a lot of different areas in Home Builder. And so here you can see as you're drawing walls and displaying the dimension to the wall length that you're creating. I'm also using geometry nodes to display different annotations for obstacles. And so here, creating this new library for things like outlets and switches and things that you need to account for in your design. And so not only showing the annotation to the obstacle, but also showing those dimensions to where that's being placed in the design is really important. And so you can place things like access panels, things like vents on the floor, and being able to see those dimensions is really nice. But if you need to include different dimensions in your design, here in the View tab, you have things like Plan View Dimensions, which you can just click a few points to determine where that dimension is going to be placed in your design. And these not only display in the 3D environment, but on the 2D drawings that you're going to create later on. So let's go and take a look and see how that geometry node is set up. Here I'm going to create one more Plan View Dimension just right here. And here if we go to the Geometry Node workspace, here we can take a look at this node structure. And the most important thing is that we have all of these different properties that you can specify. And so you have the arrow height that you can change, the arrow length, the leader length that you can change, the line thickness. If you want to extend the line past those arrows, you've got a parameter for that. Here, if you want to align the text to the curve, let's say you're creating a angular dimension. Right now it's going to display straight, but with this option turned on, it's going to adjust it to align to that curve. You can change the text size of that dimension. Here, if you want to offset the text from that line, if you're creating a smaller dimension, you can turn that on and then specify that offset amount. You can flip the arrows on that dimension and determine the number of decimal places that you're going to be using for that. And I also just recently added the ability to display that dimension in metric. So you can determine if you want to display that in millimeters or in inches. And the way that the node is set up here is here on the left, I'm creating all of the geometry. So here, this is where I'm creating the text geometry. I'm creating the line geometry here. This is the arrow geometry. And then I'm passing it to this section where I'm basically instancing all of that geometry onto the curve in the correct location. And so if we take a look at the text geometry here, we know we're using just this string to curves node, which allows me to display that text. And here, if you did want to change the font that you're using, it's as simple as just selecting a new font here. And since this node is being used for all dimensions, it's going to change all of the dimensions in your design. And I would like to set this up to where I can have this as a parameter that I can adjust in the properties here, but there's no input for that. So I'm still looking to determine exactly how to provide that to the user without having to dig into this node structure. But to calculate the text for this, all I'm doing here is getting the curve length and then determining if I'm displaying this in metric or imperial. Here I have the inch value, which I basically just multiply the length since this is giving me a value in meters by the conversion to inches here. And then I'm just appending the inch annotation to that text. And then if I'm displaying it in metric, I'm taking the millimeter value and multiplying it by 1000 and then appending the mm text at the end of that. 
Now here, obviously, there's a lot of improvements that can be made to this because people are going to want to be able to display their dimensions in meter and centimeter and feet and inches and inches with a fractional value at the end. But for right now, I've just implemented the ability to display the inch and the millimeter value. But obviously, if you wanted a meter value, you can just multiply this by one here and change the text to be M. So being able to display the text value in a lot of different ways is something that I would like to improve in the future. Um, also, I know there's different ways that people want to display their dimensions. Right now, I just have these arrows, but there's tick marks and all sorts of other ways that you'll want those to display on your 2D drawings. But for right now, I'm just taking this mesh circle, including three vertices, and then here I'm using the set position node to basically change the geometry for each one of these points here. And then after I have created all of the geometry, I'm just using the align Euler to vector command to then set the position of the geometry in the correct location based on that curve. And then I'm just joining all of that geometry together, setting the material to what you have here set for the material property. And that's how I'm creating the geometry. So there are several improvements that I would like to make to this, but this is a really good starting point. So next I'm using geometry nodes to create all of the geometry for the cabinet parts in the professional libraries. And so here, if you drop in one of these components, all of the different cabinet parts are created using simple geometry nodes. And you can take a look at this by looking at the geometry nodes. And this is a much more simple setup here, but the parameters or the properties that are created for each one of these parts here allows the length, width, and thickness for the part to be specified along with material for the top, bottom, surface, and the different edges. And the way that this is created here is it's just being created from a simple cube primitive and the size is being created from the length, width, and thickness property. And then the rest of this is just basically transforming the geometry, placing it in the correct location based on these mirror properties. And up here, this section is just assigning the correct material that you have specified here to the correct portion of the geometry. And so we're assigning all of those materials. We're determining if we need to flip the faces based on the mirror properties to keep the normals pointed outwards. And that's what's created the geometry. And so it's a pretty simple setup here, but we have several different operators that are defined when you're dropping these components. So if you're placing one of these components, it's going to display the dimensions and allow you to determine the exact position of where that's located. If you're dropping in drawers, it's going to fill that opening that you have specified. Doors will do the same thing. And so all these components just allow you to quickly place these. You don't have to worry about the whole geometry node setup for this. You can just drag and drop these components together to create a variety of different custom cabinet products. So using geometry nodes for basic cabinet parts is pretty straightforward. But when you look at cabinet doors, there are a ton of different styles. So Jonathan Lampel at Orange Turbine and CG Cookie helped me create this concept for a node that's flexible enough to create thousands of different door styles. And so here you obviously have the ability to adjust the size of the door. You ha also have the inset depth for the inner profile. But more importantly, you have all these different parameters to set the profile for the outside profile, the inside profile, and the panel profile. And so if I wanted to adjust these, I can just select a different profile from this list here. You can see it's going to adjust the inside profile. And so I have the same thing for the outside profile to where I have all these different variations. And all of these are created with simple curves. And so here's an example of one of those to where this is just a simple curve that then is used by this node to create the geometry for the door. And so you can see it's a bit complex, but it's really flexible to where it just handles all of the geometry of creating the door for you. And all that you need to do is create the simple profiles. Now there's more that needs to be added to this door to create arched and cathedral raised panel doors, but this is a really good start. Next, I wanted to create a node that would allow me to change the size of complex geometry without having to go into edit mode and make the modifications manually. And so here, this is just a model that I already had. It's just a static mesh. 
And you'll notice if I try to change the dimensions of this mesh, portions of the mesh warp in a way that I don't want them to. These slides should always stay static and they shouldn't squash and stretch as I change the dimension. And so what I've done is I've added some vertex groups to this model that basically specify what portions of this mesh should stretch with the X, Y, and Z dimension. And then I have this divider vertex group, which is basically for this component here, because I want this to always remain in the center of this drawer. And so with those vertex groups assigned, now I just have this simple modifier that I can add which is a change size modifier. And here I have X, Y, and Z dimension properties that will allow me to change the size. But in order to use these, I need to assign the groups to these input properties. I need to change them by selecting on this button here. But once I do that, now you'll notice I can select those vertex groups that I created. So I can just assign the X group to the dim X, the Y to the Y, Z and then the divider. And so with those assigned, now I can change the X dimension and you can see the object changes in the way that I want to where it just changes the X dimension of the object, but the slides remain static. So it doesn't stretch those in the way that I don't want. And the way that this works is by just getting the bounding box of the static mesh here. And then I'm using the set position node. So I'm just taking or I'm subtracting the original location from the size that I want. And then using the selection property to basically determine what portion of the mesh that I want to deform. So it's a pretty simple node setup, but just allows me to quickly convert a static model to something that I can change the size of. And this same concept can apply to things like appliances to where there's all sorts of different refrigerators and ovens that come in all sorts of different sizes. And rather than forcing the user to go into edit mode and make the modifications they want to change the size of those, they now have just some simple properties that they can adjust to set the size of that appliance and the geometry will deform in the way that they want. So that's all I really wanted to show in this video. And again, the reason I wanted to create this is to show users how I'm using geometry nodes because there is so much to this feature and there may be things that I'm not familiar with or improvements that others might know how to implement. So if you're familiar with geometry nodes and interested in collaborating on this project, please feel free to reach out. The links are provided in the description of this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch this, and I'll see you in the next one.